So I was wondering, how hard can it be to fix a Sega Game Gear with a bad display? Let's find out. So I recently picked up this Sega Game Gear. Uh, unfortunately, when I try to turn it on, this is what happens. Well, nothing. Try again. Yeah, you just get a bunch of lines on the screen. That's clearly not what's supposed to happen. So I think what I'm gonna do is go ahead and replace all the capacitors in the console, um, see if that makes a difference, if it does great. Um, if it doesn't, I'll keep troubleshooting and we'll see if we can get this back in working order. So let's get this thing opened up. Okay, so this is the main board, audio board and power boards. So we'll start with the back because I think it's got fewer capacitors. And it should just come out. Yeah, that just lifts right out of there. There we go. All right, so this uh, power board seems to be in pretty good shape. Looks like there's maybe three capacitors there to replace. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add a little bit of fresh solder to each leg of the capacitor there. Actually, I'm just gonna get the solder wick here and remove as much of that solder as I can. There we go. Now this one, I can heat up both pads at the same time and just go, oh. <laughs> that one just fell right out. Okay, that one was a little simpler. Ooh, that's hot. And we are working on our last one here. Gently rock it back and forth, and glad how easily that one came out. No problem at all. All right, let's check the values on these. So all these capacitors are labeled with their specifications, and that will help us determine what capacitors we need to replace these with. Uh, the voltage doesn't have to be exactly the same. Anything 6.3 volts or greater should work, but the capacitance value has to be the same. So what you want to do before you add the new capacitor is take a look at the board. Uh, the positive side will be marked, and then the negative here is this um, white marking there. And then on the capacitor itself, you'll have usually a stripe and the shorter leg uh, also denotes the negative side. So you want to go negative to negative, positive to positive. The polarity matters, so you want to make sure that you do that right. On the other side of the board, you can see that I've bent the legs out at roughly 45 degrees, and... There we go. And the last thing you want to do is take some flush cutters and then just snip those pretty close to the board and you want to actually hold on to those legs while you're snipping them so they don't go flying into your eye. If you want to be more efficient, you can set up multiple components and then solder them all at once. All right, I've got all the solder joints cleaned up and looking nice. And on the other side are our new capacitors. Looking good. All right, so this is the audio board, and these capacitors are gonna be a little bit trickier than the ones that were on the power board because these are not through-hole capacitors. They're surface mount, and the one the replacements I have are uh, through-hole. Ooh, smells fishy. That's the smell of capacitors. Yeah, these old things. So I had a little trouble, and I knocked one of these teeny tiny surface mount components off the board. I'm not gonna worry about it. We're just going to solder it back on. And I'm just going to tin the pads here that we're working with. Ah, it's just jumping all around. All right, that actually gave me quite a bit of trouble and I'm sorry I didn't capture it on camera. I struggled with that for about 10 minutes, but I did get it back on the board. Hopefully I didn't, you know, burn up that little resistor. All right, so we're gonna try and mount a through hole capacitor onto a surface mount pad. And you can see that I've bent the leads into kind of a zigzag pattern there. We're gonna try and keep this bent low to the board as possible so it's not too high. Melt that solder on there. I don't think that's gonna interfere with the uh, cable connector there. So uh, yeah, 
Just four more like that and we should be done with this board. So there's the final soundboard with all the capacitors installed. I think that's a pretty clean install. Now I'm going to remove the main board so that I can work on it. This isn't strictly necessary, but I find it makes things easier to work on. And plus I like to clean everything underneath the board, including the screen and the buttons. Yeah, oh, okay, that was easy. Oh, hoo hoo. Did not want to touch that, all right. Yikes. So I think I'm gonna start with these two. If you look around the board, you can see these gold colored dots. And this is where the back of the console, actually these posts come down and, and touch the board on those spots. So you don't wanna put any components there because they'll interfere with the ability to close the case and you will not have a fun time. Apply some heat. I've added some flux here, I didn't show that, but there we go. And so you just Place it where you want it. And then I just, sometimes I'll use a tweezer just to apply a little bit of downward pressure on that leg as I melt the solder. Just, you want a good mechanical connection, contact with the pad, and there you go. Now because of the corrosion from the leaky capacitors, it's a little bit trickier to get that heated up get that solder to melt because it's just kind of a mess under there. Well, that just about does it. The All the capacitors have finally been replaced. Uh, I counted 20 in total. All the residue cleaned off the board and just, you know, cleaned everything up in general. Um, let's put it back together. Yeah. All right. Will this go together? I'm just checking to see here that nothing's going to be squished or crushed or anything like that. Is it going to go? Okay, so I managed to install the power switch uh, backwards, uh, which was causing me problems closing the case, but I fixed it. Um, I've screwed everything back together. I've put some batteries in and uh, here we go. <laughs> yeah, I see. Hold on, volume, where are you? It works. It looks good. No dead pixels. Oh man. This is what I was hoping for. Okay, I do not know how to play Sonic, so yeah. This is gonna be ridiculous, but... But it works. That's amazing. Well, I was really fortunate. The first thing I tried actually fixed the display issue. So if you have some experience soldering, uh, this isn't too hard, but it does require a bit of patience and there are some tight spaces in there. So I wouldn't consider this a good first soldering project. So I wanted to know how hard it would be to fix a Sega game here with a bad display. And overall, I think it was a medium level of difficulty, but I wanna know what you think. So let us know in the comments below. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.